right? It's different. Martin's not here anymore. There's definitely no mountains. Looks like they still have the ugly green plastic stuff on the patio. Ooh. Looks a lot smaller when you're an adult. Like I imagined a lot, you know, I know it was my childhood memory, so I know it's kind of tricking me, but I imagined it to be just a lot more elaborative and heaven-like, you know. Um, I didn't even know that, it makes sense that there's a house behind here, but I just literally thought it was like, you know, a view of mountains. And, you know, when things are different, uh, feel sad a little. It's kind of having your bubble burst a little bit. No tomatoes. Kind of smells like dog poo. <laughs> they were here. The plot was here and all along there, you know. So when I ran down the stairs, my grandma would be here and, you know, her back was turned towards me at this angle. And this was like all dirt, that was all dirt. And it seemed, the yard seemed so much bigger in my memory, like three times the size of this tiny little thing. And I'm sure it's the same size, but when you're tiny, it just seems so vast and, and grand. And now it's just, you know, a little yard overgrown with weeds, with, a different family, speaking a different language. You know, feels so familiar, yet not at all at the same time. Yeah. Oh, man. Um... If I could think about this memory and, and what it taught me, I think it, it I don't know, I just imagine, like, when I think about that memory, I feel like I'm open, you know? Um, I'm free of judgment, I'm free of judging others, uh, and I can just live as myself and I think in that sense, it really taught me this kind of appreciation of life. Um, because when I think back to that moment, I keep thinking of that word bliss. And you can only have bliss if you can really appreciate it so deeply from like your head to your toes. Uh, and <clears throat> having that, you know, moment of solitude and connection with my grandma and that, and they say out of all the senses, that smell is one of the strongest and that memory, that that was my first smell. Um, it's just this very intensely deep appreciation for life. Um, and, you know, and for me, that appreciation for life is not only with people from family, but with, with the world around us and how strong a just a scent from a vine tomato can leave in my my mind and my heart. I think that that is what it reminded me of. It's on an airplane. So this house is a duplex, and next door, um, there were the neighbors had children, and I remember being on their porch and playing with their kids. And um, as I got older, I remember this one super cute little kid named Christopher. 
uh, and just kind of like taking care of him when his elders were in the kitchen or, uh, or what have you. And I just from like this memory of my grandma in their kitchen upstairs, like making me breakfast, like she would make me tantan almost every morning, which is like a Chinese steamed egg with the milk and ginger with sugar. Uh, and like, so the smell and taste of that comes back and, you know, mostly just remembering her, her smile and laughter. Because I think uh, it existed a lot in this house. And um, after, I think, moving, she still had the smile and laughter, but uh, for some reason, the memories in this house are just the strongest for me. Yeah. just being like oh wow like grandma what are you doing you know and just like probably like running across to her and being like on my knees like just curious and you know she's like all wise and quiet like working on the tomatoes and like snipping things and I'm like super curious and just really peeking and observing her and um probably just like on my knees uh and watching her with the tomatoes and and being like, what's that smell? Uh, and I probably just stayed in this position for a long time and just watched her. And then like, probably like poked the tomatoes, like it's mushy. And the vines were kind of prickly. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, waddle back and just like watch her from a distance. I mean, like, Grandma, Grandma. Asking 10,000 questions that nobody can answer. That was probably very likely. I don't even remember the house next door. Huh. In like my memory, the garden was like this, you know, single plot dwelling among like a landscape of amazingness of mountains and nothing. But it was like, sur I'm like surrounded by other houses and like the streets right there. I guess maybe when you're young, you just kind of remember all the good stuff and then build beauty around it if you want to. Um, yeah, I think mostly for me, it is like this positive sense of joy, love and appreciation. And then it just, it also kind of reminds me that I feel like I should have done more to um, share, reshare those memories with my grandmother while she was still around. and. You know, I know regret's not a good way to live by, but it just reminds sometimes of, you know, you never know what you have until you lose it and all this, these kind of crappy sayings I wish weren't true, which are usually true. Um, so, so yeah, it just, you know, encourages me, I think on some level to uh, reach out to my elders and try to um, make sure that I can do that with them while they're still around. And, um, and I think a big part of being able to do that is to let go uh, of all the crap that's between you and the other person so that you can show them love. Um, so yeah, so mostly it's, it's a memory of joy. Uh, but I think on, uh, in some ways to experience like really true deep joy um, it's often tied to some sense of deep loss or sadness or pain because you know when you're in the darkness and you see just a tiny bit of light it's just that much greater if you've been in the darkness before and I think there's something to be said about that too so uh, yeah